Welcome. The title of today's climate update is Running Out of Water. The reason for that is that the world's aquifers are being depleted at an alarming rate according to a NASA study. This global map shows whether aquifers are increasing in their capacity or decreasing in their capacity. Areas of red and orange are decreasing, areas of blue are increasing. And you can see that large portions of Russia, Africa, northern India, northern China, California and the southeast of the United States are losing a great deal of their groundwater. This has particularly been the case in California where they've been draining the aquifer for many decades. You can see the effect of doing this sort of thing here. In the San Joaquin Valley, over a 50 year period, the draining of aquifers there has resulted in something like a 30 foot drop in the level of the land. Now that process has only accelerated since then and is even worse in the Central Valley. This information comes from the NASA GRACE mission which is a gravity sensing mission so they can actually use the gravity of the water underground to see whether the level of the water is increasing or decreasing. They use a very similar technique on the ice at the poles to see whether these polar caps are gaining or losing ice and they're of course losing ice at quite an alarming rate as well. Meanwhile America burns. There's a large number of wildfires burning across the country. Uh, when I lived in California we had a fire season that was late summer and early autumn but basically California now has a 12 month fire season. Firefighters in Colorado stared on in disbelief as a snow covered forest caught fire and burned. Arizona, Oklahoma and Alaska have also been hit with unprecedented wildfires. And the study by the US Forest Service has linked all of this to the effects of global warming making the conditions more favorable for forest fires. Global warming is also bad for your health. In this study they took the various effects of global warming and see how that links into our health. There are obviously direct effects like storms, drought, flood, heat waves but there are also indirect effects that we ne don't necessarily think about so much like change in water quality, air pollution, change of land use and changes in local environments. Now that also feeds into our social dynamics. Different ages and different genders are affected more than others. And of course the status of your health makes things either better or worse. If you have good health care then you're better able to withstand these problems than if you have poor health care. Socioeconomic status is another factor that should be considered. Those in poor societies are going to be much more affected by global warming than those in rich societies and will cause, because of disasters, people to move from one area to another and that can lead to, to conflicts over water, land and food. And that's one of the issues that the Pentagon has just raised in its study of the military aspects of global warming. Now what are the impacts that, that they've identified? Well there's many of them but some of them are really obvious. In places where you're getting major climate effects it's going to disrupt the food supply and so people are going to starve so people are going to be undernourished. Allergies are another problem that perhaps more of us suffer from in the West. This last spring with a very harsh winter and then the sudden warm-up in April that we had here in the uh, mid-Atlantic region uh, we had what was called a tsunami of pollen and my, a lot of my friends were wandering around here uh, suffering very very badly from allergies. Infectious diseases are another issue that's hit home relatively recently. One of our neighbors came down with West Nile, an unheard of disease in this area a decade ago uh, and it was became very sick as a result of it of course respiratory diseases in general. Now poisoning here requires some explanation. This is mainly due to uh, shellfish and fish being affected by algae blooms, the so-called red tides. When the fish are harvested from those areas they have toxins in them that can actually uh, harm people, in fact actually kill people. So you have to be very careful with these things and these red tides, these algae blooms are becoming much more common as there's more fertilizer running off down the rivers and then the higher temperatures create much more extreme algae blooms over larger areas. More links of weather phenomenon to global warming. 
Studies issued in the American Meteorological Society journals and reported by the Denver Post include the Hurricane Sandy was now linked to global warming, Typhoon Haiyan, and also the Colorado flooding from a couple of years ago. This doesn't mean that global warming caused these, but the severity of these events were made much worse due to the high temperature, water or the extra moisture in the atmosphere to create the floods or the storms. Now contrails have been shown to affect climate. Not chemtrails, because of course they don't exist, but contrails. A contrail forms when the exhaust from a jet engine mixes with low density cold air at high altitude with high humidity. When they form there's two effects. One cools the planet, one warms the planet. And the question is which one is dominant? Like clouds they reflect sunlight back into space so they cool the planet. However, also like clouds, they act to trap IR heat coming from below in the form of a greenhouse gas which is what of course water vapour is. So which one wins? The net effect is small but it is a net increase in warming. So those of you believing that these contrails or alleged chemtrails are being put up there to counteract global warming, it's shown now that this would not occur and so it's shown now that this would not help so uh, the authorities would not be doing this anyway. So we're, we're really just looking at contrails. The other thing is that even in the highest traffic areas such as Western Europe and the east coast of the United States at most five to ten percent of the sky is covered by these effects. So it's a very small effect over a small area even in the highest risk areas. So the effect is going to be uh, relatively inconsequential. On days when contrails form their main effect is to decrease the temperature difference between night and day. During the day they reduce the high temperature level and during night they increase the low uh, temperature. And this effect disappears on days when conditions are not favorable for the formation of contrails like you have turbulent winds at those altitudes or you have very low humidity so the contrail immediately dissipates. This was a report from the Journal of Climatology. Poor old Alaska is getting bait. Record temperatures are being formed across the state. Partly due to low winter snows, uh, you're getting uh, these forest fires that I mentioned earlier, but there's a high pressure system stuck over the state. Anchorage recently broke a record at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, which made it warmer than a lot of cities in the, in the southern uh, US. And Sitka broke its high temperature record by a full 6 degrees Fahrenheit. The Northwest is suffering the same sorts of problems. Here you have heat advisories, excessive heat washes, and excessive heat warnings for many areas, including Seattle, uh, parts of Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, and even parts of Montana. Temperatures here have been typically above 100 for several days in a row. And so no surprise then that US high temperature records continue to tumble. Let's compare the high temperature records with the low temperature records for the last 30 days. And you can see there's been nearly 4,000 high temperature records set with only about 900 low temperature records set. You can see here we have over 6,000 high temperature records set compared with just about 1,600 low temperature records set. So indeed the globe is warming. It's getting more and more difficult to support this idea that there's been a pause in global warming. We're now back into a very similar El Nino that we were back in 1998. And you can see the temperatures are much, much higher than they were back then. So the warming uh, trend has continued for similar conditions. And we need to start to, to realize that and do something about it. That's all for now. See you next time. Thanks for listening.